welcome everyone in our previous class we have observed the importance of energy conservation and energy security with context to those topic today i would like to cover first one the energy conservation act 2001 and its features and second one the electricity act 2003 so let's begin our session with the energy conservation act 2001 and its features with the background of high energy saving potential and its benefit and to bridging the gap between the supply and demand to reduce the environmental emission through the energy saving and to effectively overcome the barrier the government of india has enacted the energy conservation act 2001 the act provide much needed legal framework and institutional arrangement for embarking on the energy efficiency drive under the provision of act bureau of energy efficiency has been established with the effect from 1st march 2002 by merging with energy management center of ministry of power the bureau would be responsible for implementation of policy program and the coordinations of implementation of energy conservation activities basically this act contains nine chapter chapter number 1 is related with the definition related to the act chapter number 2 define and state the role of be while chapter number 3 and 4 exhibit about the power of bureau of energy efficiency while the chapter number 5 and 6 indicates or you can say provide the power of central and the state government to facilitate and enforce for the energy efficient use okay while the chapter number 7 provide guideline for the finance and the audit chapter number 8 include the guideline regarding the penalties while the chapter number 9 is basically related with the miscellaneous provisions for the act some of the important features of the energy conservation act are first one standard and labeling so standard and labeling has been identified as a key activity for the energy efficiency improvement okay the standard and labelization program when in place would ensure that only energy efficient equipment and the appliances would be made available to the consumers okay the main provision of energy conservation act on the standards and the labeling are first one evolve minimum energy consumption and the performance standard for the notified equipment second prohibited manufacturing sell and import of such equipment which does not conform to the standard then third introduce a mandatory labeling scheme for the notified equipment and the appliances to enable consumer to make informed choice okay then the fourth one you can say to disseminate the information on the benefit to the consumer so it is all about the standard and the labeling then next one is designated consumers and the agency okay so you can say the main provision of energy conservation act on the designated consumers are first one the government would notify the energy intensive industries and the other establishment as a designated consumer second one schedule to the act provide the list of designated consumer which covered basically energy intensive industries railways port transportation sectors and the power station etc then third one the designated consumer to get an energy audit conducted by an accredited agency or you can say by accredited consultant or auditors the next one we have certification of energy manager and 
accreditation of energy auditor firm a cadre of professionally qualified energy manager and the auditor with the expertise in the policy analysis project management would be developed through the certification and the accreditation program and the bureau of energy efficiency okay design some of the training modules and conduct the national level examination for the certificate of energy managers and energy auditors next we have energy conservation building code the growing demand for the energy and implication in generating more energy leads major country around the world to take initiative for saving energy and to move toward the renewable energy sources okay as per the energy statistics 2018 report 30 percentage of yearly electricity is consumed in india through the building sector only while the industrial sector still remain at the top of the energy consumer okay in the in that statistical table it won't take long for building sector to become the largest emitter of the greenhouse gas effect okay and it would be surprising for many to note that the 75 percentage of the energy consumption in the building sector is from the residential building and it has been increasing rapidly in the recent year okay there are various reasons that play important role in driving this consumption for example air conditions which are largely decentralized in the residential unit are one of the major contributor toward this spike in the consumption and the rising global temperature due to the climate change is enforcing more and more people to use air conditioning system for the thermal comfort according to the given criteria the government has formed eco nivas samhita 2018 is an energy conservation building code for the residential building launched by the ministry of power in 13 december 2018 and the aim of this code is to benefit the occupant and the environment by providing the energy efficiency in the design and the construction of home apartment and township the code is prepared by the expert including building material supplier and the developer as well okay and the bureau of energy efficiency which is statutory body under the ministry of power whose objective is to implement the policies and the program in energy efficiency and the conservation okay following aspects are considered under the provision of the energy conservation building code so the first one is fresh air compliance okay ventilation being important aspect of thermal comfort in diagram we can depict that just by increasing the window area we can get 80 percentage of sunlight in comparison to another one okay such type of designing aspect result into the creation of energy saving opportunities i mean to say we can save energy expenses behind the lighting okay now second one is daylight compliance so you can say the sufficient daylight into frequently used part of house will decrease the frequency of artificial lighting requirement being in the tropical climate zone we receive the abundant amount of the daylight throughout the year and making the effective use of this will ensure that the energy efficiency in our day to day activity okay then third one is roof performance compliance so you can say just by observing the diagram roof act as a layer between the indoor and the external climate and plays an essential role 
in overall performance of the building. Reducing the heat gain and the losses from the roof will help in improving the thermal comfort in indoor environment and thereby reducing the energy required for cooling and heating through the mechanical ventilation. Okay? Or you can say thermal performance of the roof is categorized by the thermal transmissions and the maximum value of the thermal transmittance. Okay? Generally this value varies from 1.2 watt per meter square Kelvin to 1.5 watt per meter square Kelvin. Okay? So it is all about the today's session. Okay? Stay tuned for the next session. Thank you.